the number one form to make you money. Powerhouse Affiliate. Hi, welcome to this quick tutorial on Facebook. This is a very uh, entry level kind of brief overview of Facebook and what's inside when you actually log into your account. So what I've done is I've actually logged in here. Let me just log into Facebook so you know exactly how I found this page that I'm on. So this is one of the accounts that I actually run. As you can see, it's not actually my name, but this is just an account I've created. Um, I've actually added myself as a friend on this account. So I'm just going to come in here. When you first come into your Facebook account, uh, to find your ad area, you would just come and click this arrow and click Manage Ads. So this is going to bring me into my ad account. Now when I click on my name here, you'll see that it brings me right into the Ads Manager. So here I am into the Ads Manager. As you can see, I've got some active... Uh, accounts going on or some active campaigns going on right now um, the way you can see that is right here in campaign column you can see I have three campaigns they're all active and this is uh, an important column here this tells you what the delivery is the delivery status of your campaign if it says anything uh, you know if I was to click on one of these it would turn it off and say inactive but it can also say other things like um, disabled account or or your payment didn't go through anything like that but when you see all active that that's a good thing assuming that you're making money off your ads uh, this is uh, the the mobile app install campaign I'm running here as you can see the results here uh, show what my objective was when I first created my ad when you come into your account you can create ad up here and I'll get into that in just a few minutes I'm just gonna show you what I'm looking at here uh, this is the spend for the last 30 days, as you can see, and I can change the stats here by just going here. I can set it for the last seven days. I can pick a specific day if I want. I can customize what, what date range I want to do. Uh, just for simplicity purposes, I just set it for 30 here, just so you can see uh, what's happening. So as you can see, the ads have been running. Um, here it was a little higher with 3,000 spent in one day, 3.1, 3 and then it went down. Uh, now it went back up a little, down, up, and last few days it's it's lower. Uh, this is for a few reasons. Uh, maybe I paused a campaign or you know lowered my cost per click to optimize my campaigns. So these are these are just a good. This is just a good overview, I guess, of what happened in the last 30 days. The reach. This is how many people. As you can see here, when you hover over, you can just see what this means. The number of people who saw my ads at least once. Reaches different from impressions, which may include multiple views of your ads by the same people. It's a good number to look at. This is the cost that I've spent. This is the cost per mobile install. Uh, I know that I'm getting paid $10 per mobile install. So right here, I know I'm making profit. So this is a number that I'm actually looking at constantly uh, to make sure that this doesn't go over $10. So this actually is a campaign I just started. As you can see, there's 76 for the last 30. But if I was to change this for uh, yesterday, for example, you can see yesterday I actually had 35 installs yesterday. So I just started this a couple days ago, and it's actually looking really good. Um, I'm getting paid 10, like I said here, but I'm paying only 465 per install. So I've, I've already made profit on this one. For example, yesterday I would have made $350 on the mobile app installs, and I only spent $162. So that's a pretty good uh, return on investment. If I want to change the the columns here, which I, I often do, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click on this button here. And it's going to give me a bunch of different options. The one that I'm really looking to choose here is performance and clicks. This gives me a, a good overview of a little more data. As you can see, now I have more columns here. The ones that I'm really looking at first is I would look at frequency. I want to make sure that my ad isn't being over delivered to the same people and that's what this means basically. What this means is that my audience that I've chosen for my ad when I created my ad up here has on average each person has seen my ad 1.09 times which is good. It means that it's not being over delivered to them. If it was, if this was up in you know the three, four, five range then that's that's not good. That means my ad's probably dying out and my conversion rate's um, lowering. 
and you'll see that uh, after a time you'll your graph will start going down because people keep seeing the same advertisement so you need to constantly come in here check things make sure you keep it fresh and make sure your ads are fresh here's your total spent for the time range that uh, you choose <clears throat> so yesterday on this uh, campaign for example a traffic campaign the my my objective here oh, let me just go back for a second and I'll get into these stats later so if I look at this traffic campaign I spent $563 yesterday on it uh, it doesn't end ever this is the total spent yesterday but these are the breakdowns for each campaign ends this is when the campaign ends obviously uh, but I have it set to ongoing so there's no end date you can change this if you want to run your campaign for a week or if you want to run it for a day you can you can set this to end whenever you want so you don't overspend your, your budget uh, since these campaigns are making money uh, I, I just leave it ongoing and I come in here and make sure everything's running properly uh, six this is a this is an important column here it's called CTR which means click-through rate uh, what I'm what I'm trying to do here is make sure my click-through rate is high what happens when your click-through rate is high this means that more people are clicking on your ad the people who see your ad are clicking on it which is a good uh, good thing and Facebook will reward you for that they'll actually charge you less per click because more people are clicking on your ad because basically when more people are clicking on your ad it means Facebook is making more money and they reward you and show your ads more right now 4% is a little low but if you look at my average for the last 30 days it's probably higher yeah, it is a little higher as you can see. So over time, if I don't change my ads and I don't uh, adjust things, then this, the click-through rate is going to start to go down because more and more people are seeing my ad. And as you can see, the frequency also went up over the last 30 days. It means uh, people have seen my ad twice now, which isn't, isn't bad still. Once this gets over two or three, then it's time to maybe look at the advertisement and see if I can change the wording or the images just to make sure that this, uh, this stays low. I might have to even change the audience because uh, it's the same audience. Uh, moving on here, just quickly. There's a few other columns here. Clicks, uh, the the clicks here. I just want to explain that quickly. Clicks versus. Here's the clicks all, and then there's another one over here. Twenty one thousand, and as you'll see here, click clicks all is one hundred and fifteen thousand. So there is a difference. I'm playing. I'm paying a dollar ten per click over here, but right here I'm paying twenty one cents per click. So which number should I, you know, be looking at? Most of the time I'm looking at this one, and I'll explain. It, as you can see here, clicks all the total number of clicks on my ad. <clears throat> this can include off-site clicks to my website, page likes, post comments, event responses, or app installs. What I usually do is I look at the clicks all which is 115,000 here for the last 30 days and I'll go into my third-party tracking system which I use is, is CPV lab some people use other ones like volume or whatever else they use and I'm going to compare this number to what I see in my own tracking and see how many were actually website clicks and usually the number here is more accurate with website clicks to my actual offer page or landing page than this number so I'm gonna I'm usually going to rely on this number more but I, I always confirm it because some campaigns are different it depends on what your objectives are and what results you're looking for uh, moving on here uh, cost per click this is the cost per click for all clicks so as you can see it's much less than what I'm paying over here and just so you know the link clicks here is the number of times the ad achieved the outcome based on my objective so my objective is link clicks Over here, there's some other columns here I don't generally go into. Uh, you can look at those later. I'm not going to get into them in this video, but you know where they are. Now I'm going to go over and, and actually click into one of my campaigns. I'll go into the traffic campaign. This is an objective for, for getting traffic. And as you can see, when you click on the campaign itself, it gives you more data into the uh, actual ad sets. The ad sets are, are, are different targeting, uh, but it's the same campaign. So I might have a bunch of ads in this in this area. If I click on here, it'll show all the ads. If I click on here, it'll show other ads. But they're they're in the same campaign, but they have different targeting. 
For example, I might target people 18 and plus here, but in this one I might have a similar audience to customers that were in the past uh, running different ads. I can get even all that same data in here that I saw on the other page, but it's a little deeper into the into the results. So uh, this is where I usually look into the ad sets and I'll even go a step further and go into the actual ads. So if I click on here, you'll see that I've got my ad. This is this is the actual ad that's running. And this is this is very important information about your 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 advertisements. And each ad that I have inside my account <coughs> has a tracking link that is that separates it from the other ads. So when I go into CPV Lab, which is my tracking system, I'll be able to tell which advertisement specifically is getting the most conversions and, and the best ROI and the best click-through rates and everything else. That is another step further into the data. All of this data is important if you, if you want to make money online. Another important indicator here of, of success is the relevance score. This is an important number here. The higher your relevance score or the closer it is to 10, the better your ad is going to perform on Facebook. The more delivery you will get, the more likely that uh, you know they like your ad, so they're, they're going to reward you. There's a lot of things that determine your relevancy score, and I, I don't know them all, to be honest with you, but they have a, an algorithm, and they, they can tell you know through engagement of your ad, uh, through your click-through rate, how many people click on your ad, and, and then those kind of indicators. So the more uh, a good way to make sure that your relevancy score is high is to make sure that your target audience that you choose when you create your ad is in fact targeted to the people that would actually click on your ad and people that are interested in your ad. So on that note, let's just go into creating an ad quickly and I'll uh, explain a little bit um, when what you see inside when you create an ad. Actually, just before we do that, I want to I want to talk briefly about ads here because as you can see, I only have one ad in this ad in this ad set. Now, normally I would have three or four ads here because I want to test different ads to that audience. But since, as you can see here, I've been running this for a while, more than 30 days. It's just, it's just the last 30 days of data. I've already done all the testing. I know this ad works and I'm running only this ad right now. But in the earlier stages of the campaign, I had three or four ads in here and I could tell which one was doing the best. At that point, I paused all the other ones by clicking this button and now this one is the only one that runs. So when you go in and if, let's just say I wanted to create another ad here in this ad set, I could just click this button, create ad, and it'll create it under here. But if I want to create a completely new campaign, I have to go up and click this green button here. And this is going to bring me right to the start of creating a new campaign. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to choose an objective. This is the objective that you want out of your ad. You need to know what you want out of your advertisement or else uh, you're not going to know if you've been successful or not. As an affiliate, I'm looking for traffic or I'm looking for app installs if I'm, if I'm running an app install offer. Uh, engagement is if, if you want people to engage with your post, like like it or share it and get more people to like your page if you've created a Facebook page. Uh, I also do these types of ads. A lot of people do these types of ads when they're, when they're warming up their Facebook account. They'll, they'll start with engagement. Uh, warming up so that they can get a higher spend, uh, improve the quality of their accounts uh, before they start running real advertisements for uh, products and offers. So anyway, uh, I'm just going to pick here traffic. Uh, some of these other things uh, you can go in and, and look. They've all got different objectives. Uh, brand awareness uh, is another one for big brands. They usually run those types of offers. Let's just click on this. So here we are. I've clicked on traffic. As you can see, that's uh, the name they've given it. But if you want to create a campaign name, you can say something like, you know, uh, flashlights. Let's just say I'm running a flashlight offer. I would click continue. Now, if I'm running a flashlight offer, uh, something like the ones that you see inside Powerhouse Affiliate the network that we have, we have some flashlight offers. They work well. These are e-commerce types of offers that work on Facebook. <clears throat> you would come in here. You can set your, the first thing you would do is create your audience. 
Um, if, if, if the offer accepts the United States, then you leave it United States. If you want to remove it, you click the X here and you would add another country by just adding the location here. I'm just going to put United States back in there. Now, if I'm uh, running a flashlight offer that's a survival type of offer, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, I find it generally works better with men, uh, but women also find it, 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 it all depends on what angle you're trying to run this offer on. If you're trying to run the offer as a, a safety kind of issue, and you're saying, you know, you need one of these flashlights on you at all times, then maybe uh, the women uh, would, would, would respond better to that kind of offer. Uh, and it all depends on, so basically you need to test these yourself. Uh, for now, I'm just going to click men and languages. I'm just going to leave, but you can put English here, actually English all I will put <coughs> English all. If you're, if you're targeting English people, you may as well just put that there. It's going to help your, your, uh, your response rate and your conversion rate. <coughs> Detailed targeting. Here I can put survival. If I wanted to do something else, it depends on what my angle is. Um, if, I, if I'm looking at a survival type of angle, you know, you need one of these flashlights on you at all times when you're in the woods or whatever, then this is the type of, type of stuff I'm going to target. If the angle of my ad is safety, then I'm going to put self-defense maybe or, you know, other things in here that I, that I might think are good targets. So this is really, there's so many things you can do here that I can't really get into it all in this video or we'll, we'll be here uh, for the whole day. But uh, we get into more uh, information in some of our other training on how to choose your, your perfect audience. So when you look over here now, I can see that uh, I've got a potential reach on Facebook of uh, 1.8 million people. That's that's really high. I, I, I like around the million range. Uh, those other ads that I showed you that I'm running are around the million range. And they've been running steady for 30 plus days, more than that. So it works well. You can add a connection type if you want to connect to one of your Facebook pages or apps. I don't. Uh, I won't do that right now. You can save this audience if you want. You can click that, and then next time you come here, you can just bring it up, and it'll have these people already in here. Automatic placements, I don't generally do. Uh, let's remember that Facebook wants to make money. That's their objective, and that's their number one objective. So if you give automatic placements a try, what they're going to do is they're going to place you on the Facebook, Instagram, and audience network, and they're just going to try and spend your budget as quickly as possible. That's my opinion. Uh, I've tested it, and, and that's, that's what happens. So I usually come here, and I click Edit Placements. I choose where I want my ads to be shown, and I always start with just Facebook, so I'll uncheck these two. Instagram it works for some ads, and generally if I if I find something that works with Instagram I'm gonna do it in a completely separate campaign I'm not gonna run it combined in one campaign with Facebook and Instagram I'm always just gonna run Facebook only down here you can choose specific mobile devices if you want you just click on that you can go all mobile you can pick iOS or Android the the app install campaign that I'm running uh, only accepts Android traffic so this is where I would select Android and, and make sure that I'm only delivering my ad to the right people. You can change a few other things here. I don't do that when I'm first testing, but maybe later on. Coming down here, you can set your daily budget. This is how much your, your account is going to spend per day on that ad campaign. And as you can see, it can vary. Schedule, this is where you set the start and end date. As, uh, as I had shown earlier, it said ongoing. That's because I left this check to run my ad set continuously starting today. You can obviously set your own date here, end whenever you want, but I'm just gonna run it continuously. Link clicks is what I usually start with when I'm testing. If you wanna go for impressions, this is how many people are actually going to see your ads. This, uh, this might be good if you're looking to get your name out there or or try different strategies, but I usually start with link clicks. It's a good indicator of, of what's happening on your ads. Bid amount, automatic, you can let Facebook set your bid, which sometimes works well if you're running a pixel. I won't get too much into the pixel right now, but right now uh, I'm gonna select manual bid. So now you can see Facebook has suggested a bid for me based on my audience over here. Normally what I do, 
is I bid higher than this one. I know that sometimes this is not very accurate, but most of the time when I bid higher than this number here, my ad gets delivered. If I try and go cheap and put, you know, 10 cents or 20 cents, my ad's not going to get delivered. Uh, I'm not going to see any results and I'm just going to be wasting my time in my opinion. So I usually, I, if I was looking at this right now, I would set this as $2 and I know it's high. A lot of people do things differently. They, they, they'll suggest that you go in between here. They're, they could be right. Most of the time, you know, a lot of people go in, in between here and that works for people. Uh, I'm not saying my method is right. I'm just saying that that's what I do. And, uh, it usually works for me. I get the traffic I want. Now, mind you, I'm probably spending a lot more in the early stages of my campaign, but I, I go into a campaign knowing that I'm going to have to spend money to get data. And the only way to get data is to make sure that your ads are delivering. And most of the time, if I bid $2 per click here, I'm still not going to be paying $2 per click. I'm going to be paying a lot less. It just means that my ads are going to get delivered above other people's right here you can you can choose when you get charged I usually leave that on link uh, link click but if you like if you want to pay per thousand impressions you can click that and then you can see that things have changed here uh, they've, they've put five dollars in here automatically but I'm going to change that back to link click because I want to be paying every time somebody clicks on my link run ads all the time yes you can change this again you can run them on the schedule delivery type standard this is to spread my uh, budget throughout the day but if I want I can accelerate it and I can just click here this means that as soon as I turn my ads on and they start delivering they'll blow my budget and Facebook is a monster as most people know that if you set your accelerated budget most of the time your budget will go within minutes depending on your audience uh, you can spend a lot of money uh, quickly and not get the right kind of data that you want, especially when you're testing the early stages of your campaign. So I would highly recommend starting your campaign at standard. Show your ads throughout the day. Facebook breaks up your ads over time throughout the day and spreads your budget that way. Click continue. Now I can choose any of these uh, options here. The ones I've had most success with lately have been single image or single video. Video ads are, are really picking up for me. Uh, I like those. Single image is good too. I, I'll usually upload about five or six images here uh, before I start. So if I was to do flashlights, I would upload five, you know, pictures of somebody using a flashlight or, you know, images that I think people are going to click on. Viral type of images work well and, and things like that. Because what I'm trying to do is make sure the images are good and also that people are going to click on them so that my click through rate is high. You need to ch choose your business page. You, if you don't have a business page yet, you need to create one. You can do that right here. Create new Facebook page. Uh, this is something that you need because that's where your ad's going to be delivered from. Destination is the website URL. That's my uh, CPV Labs link in here. It's important if you're an affiliate or anybody actually who runs advertisements online that you use a tracking link here and you understand where your traffic is coming from and which ads are converting. If you're not doing that, you're setting yourself up for a failure. Here's a few other options I don't use right now. If you hover over in the middle, it'll tell you copy of your ad text and any text you enter here will be sent to people in Messenger. This is uh, if, you, if you want to target that. I don't uh, generally do that. Headline, this is uh, the headline of your ad. In fact, let's just go in and add an image. If I go up here, I'm just gonna Google flashlight images or uh, let's go into Google images quickly. See if I can find an image. What I'm looking for is something that catches my eye. Tactical flashlight might do it. So yeah, I've seen this image a lot. It's on Facebook. It's on uh, native ad sites. I'm not going to use that because I know other people have used it. And sometimes when you copy other people's images, Facebook doesn't like it. So let's just uh, find something. Just as an example, let's just go with, let's just choose this. This isn't an image I would use. I would use something more like this or this. 
these are the types of images that get clicked on. But just for the purpose of this uh, video, I'm just going to do that here. So I'll go back to my ads manager. I'm going to upload that image. Click on that. There we go. Oh, image too small. Okay. So in that case, then I would just click on it. Then I would save image. Come back here. Try that again. And it's still too small. Okay. This one looks big. Let's see if that works. This is just uh, to show you an example. I'm not actually going to run this ad. Let's just hope this one works. Okay. So that one worked. Now, as you can see, uh, the image is there. Uh, if, if, you, if you choose the right size of image, you're going to actually fill up this whole box, and that's what you want. So you need to work to find an image that fills up this whole box. Um, again, I would have put my, well, my uh, link in here, my tracking link. You have to be careful here with your headlines. If you go too aggressive, Facebook's not going to like it, and they're, gonna, they're either going to ban your account or they're going to disable your ad. For this type of advertisement, I don't think you're, you're, you're in too much heat if you if you go a little aggressive because it is an e-commerce type of offer if I was running diet or something here I wouldn't even think about it but uh, for the headline I could put something like uh, you know never leave home without it something like that and now you'll see right here it's gonna populate it's gonna show you what your ad looks like then you can put something like Okay, this is a, this is an example of a very aggressive type of ad, like this, urging citizens to carry one of these at all times, something like that. Now, obviously, this is aggressive. I'm just showing you an example, and it, it has. Oh yeah, here it is. Here, um, you can see that uh, that's the ad. This is going to obviously get a lot of click-throughs, but uh, is it too aggressive? That's that's something you need to decide uh, for yourself. So if you look here at the description, this is what I'm filling in here. You can say something like, now 70% off online, get yours today. Or if you're sending them to a video landing page, you could say something like, watch the video to see how it works something like that and then you can change this button to say something else um, watch more so now if you're sending these people to an actual landing page with a video they're gonna click watch more they're already gonna be pre they're gonna know what they're going there to watch so they're already pre-qualified for your page Display length, you can put, uh, you know, whatever flashlight you're, if you have your own landing page, you can put your landing page here, you know, tacticalflashlights.com. Let's just say that was your domain. If it is, you're a lucky person. Tacticalflashlights.com. So as you can see, it shows right there. Uh, once you're all done here, uh, you can add more parameters here. You can do pixel tracking, and that's what I was talking about earlier. You can create a pixel up here, um, pixels. But uh, we won't get into that right uh, in this video. Here, if you wanted to uh, track mobile app events, you can do that as well. But uh, for now, I'm just going to say do not track conversions. But if uh, if I was to place my pixel, I would I would definitely have this uh, tracking all conversions. Okay, and uh, once you're done, you would click place order, which I'm not going to do because I don't want to run this ad. But uh, what would happen is it would go, and you would see the next page. It would say thank you for submitting your ad and uh, it is pending approval so then you would be waiting for Facebook to approve your ad before it went live. Uh, I think that's about it for this video. We're over 30 minutes and I think I'm gonna call it quits but uh, there's definitely a lot more information inside powerhouseaffiliate.com come on inside uh, look at our look at our other videos and some more training where we get specifically into the data of actual campaigns we're running. Anyway thank you for watching talk to you later.